Welcome back, historians. I hope everyone is staying home and staying safe in the midst of this health crisis. This is the best way we'll be able to stop the spread. On the plus side, what better opportunity to catch up on some reading? I took this time to get some reading in myself and picked up Civil War II. You know what I love about Marvel? Okay, way too much to be able to go over in just one video. But one thing that I absolutely love are the events. I know that every six months or so, the universe is going to be thrown into some crazy situation and everyone will be involved. One of the things I love the most about events is characters that don't normally share a page get to work together to figure this out. Whether it's battle an enemy, figure out a puzzle, or keep the world turning just one more day. When I first started reading Marvel Comics, I just read the events. I assumed that that was the best way to get a feel for the entire universe. All it did was leaving me wanting to read more and more to figure out what was going on between the stories. Last week, I mentioned that I wanted to talk about where all the events started. So that's going to bring us to Secret Wars 1984. The world of 1980s Marvel is truly fascinating. In a lot of ways, Marvel was at its very best in the 80s. Some of the most famous stories Marvel has made has come from this decade. We're talking the Dark Phoenix Saga, Frank Miller's run on Daredevil, the West Coast Avengers, the Armor Wars, and many, many more. Among a decade of greats hides one of the best, 1984 Secret Wars. Secret Wars was the brainchild of the editor-in-chief Jim Shooter. Shooter had been advocating for a big shakeup in the Marvel Universe. He wanted to reboot everything. In his mind, the universe had gotten too large for the average fan to follow. He never gathered enough traction he needed to get a full reboot. Instead, he put out something different. And much, much better. With the success of Kenner Toy's Star Wars action figures, the world wanted more. Kenner was already signed up with DC, but Mattel was wanting in on the action figure game. Mattel already had the He-Man line from the TV show He-Man, but felt that superheroes might be the next big thing and wanted in. Jim Shooter and Mattel went into talks about the possibility of Marvel action figures. Mattel wanted a big event that brought all the names together so that they could easily market their toys. And such, Secret Wars was born. Fun fact, why was it called Secret Wars? The word secret and war tested well among young boys of the time. Secret Wars. Marvel supervillains are coming! Secret Wars! Can the Marvel superheroes stop them? Marvel supervillains and superheroes figures, each sold separately. Here, Doctor Doom and the Doom Platoon. Magneto, Doctor Octopus. There, Captain America and the Champions of Freedom. Spider-Man and Wolverine. Secret Wars. The secret's out. Doctor Doom and Spider-Man. The Marvel Secret Wars collection. Other figures each sold separately. From Mattel. The toy line might not have lasted long, but the 12 issue event was something huge. This was unlike anything that had happened before. A small premise of the story is a hugely powerful character by the name of the Beyonder emerged from outside this universe. He was tired of watching the heroes and villains fight on Earth and wanted to play with them. He transported a group of heroes and villains to a world of his creation. The name of this place? Battleworld. The combatants included the Avengers, Captain America, Man Monica Rambeau, Captain Marvel, Hawkeye, Iron Man, She-Hulk, Thor, and the Wasp. 
three members of the Fantastic Four, the Human Torch, Mr. Fantastic, and the Thing. Solo heroes, Spider-Man, Spider-Woman, and the Hulk. And the mutant team of the X-Men, Colossus, Cyclops, Nightcrawler, Professor X, Rogue, Storm, Wolverine, and Lockheed the Dragon. Magneto was also brought in as a hero. On the side of the villains, we had the Absorbing Man, Doctor Doom, Doctor Octopus, the Enchantress, Kang the Conqueror, Claw, Lizard, Molecule Man, Titania, Ultron, Vulcana, and the Wrecking Crew, and the Cosmic Entity of Galactus. This was something completely unique and one of a kind. It was the very first event in all of comic books, so this was huge. At the time, the reviews were just so-so, but through the years, it has been praised as one of the absolute best and among the greatest, not only because it started the trend of events that I love, but had some lasting effects on the Marvel Universe at the time things you wouldn't be able to see when it first came out but now looking back at the event years later you see the roots let's start with my personal favorite the first appearance of the black suit spider-man this was a huge deal spider-man changed his costume for the very first time and it looks hot the story behind the new suit in the real world is actually pretty cool. In 1982, two years before The Secret Wars was released, Marvel held a write-in contest for aspiring authors and artists to help spruce up the Marvel lineup. 22-year-old Randy Schuler submitted the idea for the black suit Spider-Man. Jim Shooter bought the concept for $220. We get the big debut of the new suit in Secret Wars number 8. This, of course, will become the symbiote that later is known as Venom. Fun fact, Venom's spider was not originally found on the symbiote. It was actually found on Julia Carpenter, the second Spider-Woman and even makes mention right here. Another big first is this was the very first time that Magneto was ever considered a hero. The Beyonder brought him in on the hero side of the lineup. Of all the villains that were included, there is one surprise addition. That is going to be Kang the Conqueror. The reason why this is a surprise addition is Kang had actually been dead for the past 8 years, finding his demise back in Avengers of 143 back in January of 1976. The Beyonder clearly brought him back to life to participate in Battleworld, and I'm glad he did because Kang is one of my favorite villains and this means we are able to have more stories with him later on. Another fun mention, you see that Iron Man is included in the roster. Well, this is not Tony Stark. It's actually James Rhodes. Most people would recognize him as War Machine, but he actually wore the Iron Man suit for a time while Tony was in rehab. The conclusion of the event gave us a few shakeups in the Marvel Universe. Spider-Man kept the black suit. Colossus broke up with Kitty Pride. Ben Grimm, the Thing, left the Fantastic Four. And Jennifer Walters, the She-Hulk, filled the hole in that roster. Overall, I think 
Marvel did a great job in 1984 with The Secret Wars. It gave us some very memorable moments. It gave us some lasting elements that are still in play today and started this trend of these big blockbuster events. But as always, I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments below. Hit me up on Facebook or Instagram. Be sure to like and subscribe for all future content. As always, true believers, Excelsior. Till next time.